Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Oh, God, I glorify you, God. I magnify you, God. Oh, God, for you, God, are worthy, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, and God is none of God like you, Lord God. Oh, God, so we owe you, God, our worship, God. Oh, God, we owe you, God, our praise. Hallelujah, God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, God. Oh, God, I pray, God, that you, God, will use me, God, on tonight, oh, God. Oh, God, hide me, God, behind you, Lord God, on tonight, God. Oh, God, use me, God, to speak a word, God, unto your daughters, God, on tonight, oh, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, decrease, God, in me, God, that you, God, may increase, God. Oh, God, and I forever, God, will glorify you, God. Oh, God, and give you all, God, the honor, God, and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Y'all gonna have to bear with me because I am super nervous. I'm shaking. <laughs> Jesus. But um, I want to give an honor to God, who's the head of my life. We thank God for Apostle C.A. Coward. Thank God for the Board of Bishop, our District Bishop, Bishop William, Overseer Johnson, our District Elder, Elder Philiston, and our pastor, Pastor Porter, and everyone in their respectable places. And if I miss something, please forgive me. I'm so nervous. But I was given a topic like three months ago. <laughs> But, uh, you know, God is good. Um, so the topic I was given is live through the process. And the subtopic that I have is stay in the potter's hand. Oh. Can Sister Leticia read for me, please? Okay, so I like to look up definitions. Um, and, of course, my topic was live through the process. So live means to remain alive. Process is a series of actions taken in order to achieve a particular end. And pottery is the process and the products of forming vessels and other, pro other objects with clay and other ceramic materials, which are fired at high temperatures to give them a hard, durable form. So I know sometimes um, we go through a lot of things that, you know, we just feel like, Lord, I just can't do it, you know, or I'm dying. That's what, you know, some people have say, me, myself, or whatever. It's just like, you know, I, I just don't feel like I can do it. And sometimes we mess up so much to where we just like, I'm not good enough. Like, God, you can't use me. Or, you know, God done threw me away. And I done said that plenty of time. But God being the potter, he can always make us and mold us and shape us into the people and the woman of God that he desires us to be. <laughs> And I have always said this, um, my big thing is just like, Lord, make me a best one to honor. And then sometimes we say stuff, and we don't really be knowing what we mean, you know, the stuff that comes behind us saying it. So the scripture for, um, if you go with me from 2 Timothy 2 and 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Um, you can keep going. Flee also useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them all with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Amen. So <clears throat> sometimes... Um, it comes trials and everything that's possible that's being thrown at us sometimes that can take us from being that vessel that God have choked, called us to be or even the vessels that we desire to be. But with God being the potter, it doesn't matter what it is that you've done, what it is that you 
anything, it's just like God is always able to put you back together. So being that vessel of God, it says, um, as a potter, it's the process and the product of forming vessels. So beyond, regardless of any trial, any shortcoming, anything, God is the potter that is making you a vessel. So stay in a potter's hand. Um, my notes is everywhere, too. But it's also steps to pottery. It's a process of pottery. And the first process of going through the pottery process is you have to choose your clay. Oh, it, um, and a scripture for that is 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of, the dar out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Also, I have for that scripture Ephesians um, 1 and 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. So God chose you. God chose you as the clay that he desired to use. Um, so you are chosen to be the clay that God desired for you to be. Amen. Um, and there are many different type of clays with different benefits, with different purpose. And um, it comes with different firing trials, temperatures that you may have. Um, I'm sorry. There are many different clays with there are many different clays with each of them being having its own different benefits with its own purpose. Um, and it all comes at different temperatures at being fired. So you all have different trials, different fiery trials, different things that we all have to go through because God chose us to go through different things because of our purpose. Amen. And, um, okay, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's different type of clay. So it's an earthenware, and that's at, it's a low fire, and that's not as durable. It's easy to mold, but it's not as durable. And we know durable is something that's able to, like, withstand to hold. And then it's another one that's a stoneware. That goes to the high heat. It has more tolerance. It's more durable, and it's also easier to mold. And it's also porcelain. It goes at high heat. It doesn't mold that easily, and that's like some of our hardhead ones. Like, we got to go through the high heat. It don't mold as easy because we fighting God and stuff like that. And that was me at one time. But, God, you have your way. Um, and it's just, um, it's just different things. God knows how much heat we all can take. But when it gets hot, we must live, remain alive through the process, knowing that you are a part, knowing that you are the part I'm sorry. You are, the fire is um, <laughs> the suffering for Jesus Christ. And at the end of the suffering, the end of your fire, you will be, um, receive exceeding joy. Um, so we can go through um, Isaiah 64 and 8. But now, O oh Lord, Thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. So that right there just shows that, you know, God is the potter. He's the one that makes us. He's the one that molds us. God called us to be saved. And I can truly say, before I came into the church, I wasn't looking for church. I wasn't looking to come to church or anything like that. So God being the potter, he chose me before I was in my mom's womb. Like, he chose me and knew, like, this is the clay that I was going to call Patrice. You know, this is the stuff that she would go through because I know that she's going to make it out because I made her. So within all of that, you have to stand in the potter's hand. Um, and another scripture I have is Jeremiah 18 and 1. And um, with this, it's... Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord 
came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine, my hand, O house of Israel. Amen. So in this scripture, the scripture, that, the verse that I really like is, can I not do with you as this potter, said the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So sometimes, um, you know, we feel like I said that we're just gone. We don't did too much. We don't done too much. Like I don't fell so far away from God to where it's just like I just can't be used. Like I'm not, I'm not good enough or whatever. And God said as seem good to the potter to make it. So God, when he made the clay, when he chose your clay, the light clay, the dark clay, the white clay, the orange clay, God said this is good because he knew what he had placed in you. And then don't never question what God can do because he said, can I not do with you as this potter said the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So as long as you stay in the potter's hand, there's nothing that God cannot do. Beyond God, anything that you have done, any shortcoming, any failure, as long as you stay in the potter's hand, allow him, God, to continue to make you, mold you, and shape you to be the woman of God that he has called you to be. And I'm sorry, but it's a the step two of the process is wedging the clay. And wedging the clay, I said, to be wedged, you have to stay in prayer. You have to stay in fasting. You have to, that's an important step that you can't step, skip. This, skip. this steps eliminates all the air bubbles. It eliminates you that may be in the clay. Getting rid of all of you, the bubbles, with mate, which makes the clay easier to work with. So you have to stay in prayer, stay in fasting, because with that, you can't skip that. I, I done skipped it before, and I done became, I was crazy. I ain't going to say crazy, but my, I, already, I had a bad uh, mouth when I was in the world. Like, I would just tell you off because I felt like I could. But and now that I'm in, in God, I have to stay in prayer and stay in fasting to eliminate me so that God can truly have his way with me. And with that, you have to deny yourself. So Matthew 16 and 24 Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. So we must stay in prayer, stay in fasting, that we can eliminate ourselves and deny ourselves, that we can truly get rid of us so that the clay as us are easier to work with, that God is not, you know, we ain't the hard heads and not hard to mold and stuff like that, but God can be able to do the work that he has called us and made us to be. And another step is you have to choose a potter, choose a pottery, make, it's a pottery making technique. And there are seven, several different ways to mold clay. Um, I, I didn't write it down, but it's different ways to mold clay. They say it's like a, you can throw it at the wheel, you can pinch it, and it's like another one that's like coil, and I, I forgot how they say you make it, but it's different ways that you make the potter as the pottery that you are making. So with you, God has to make us each different because he knows, okay, well, this one's going to be a little stubborn, so I'm going to have to pinch her. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to pinch you through because you ain't going to really listen. And some of us, he got to throw us on the wheel because we just be refusing. It's like, God, no, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. So he like, look, come here. Get on this wheel. Let me make you. And another process of um, another important thing with pottery is water. And um, the water is, of course, I would say is the Holy Ghost. The water is necessary when you are throwing pottery on the wheel to reduce backsliding, friction, and from stopping the clay from getting stuck to your hands. And for that scripture, I would say it goes to seven, John 7 and 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. So, with, in the pottery process, with, you know, getting before God and God making you and molding you, the Holy Ghost is important or whatever. Like, we have to constantly have the water flowing within us um, so that God can truly make us. Because sometimes we can get hard. And when you have water on a potter on the wheel, it helps to keep us formed so that God can continue to shape us and how he want to shape us. 
and get rid of the stuff that he wanted to get rid of. So we have to stay before God. We have to be filled with the Holy Ghost that he can truly have his way within us. And um, I have the scripture, another scripture is 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Amen. So that just shows that it's, we're one body, but it's different members. So it's, everyone is not molded the same. Even though that we are one, it's many of us. It's many members. So everybody's not molded the same. So everybody has to go through their own molding process and shaping and everything that, so that God can make you particularly who he wants you to be. Um, so now it's time to make the clay. And that is we're making vessels. And then after, in the mix of making clay, it's a trimming process. So in the trimming process, it's removing whatever inhabits your growth in God. As, um, as you are being made in God, God is removing all the old you. He's moving the hurt. He's moving the pain. He's moving the depression. He's moving everything that is, can keep you from getting to that place. So we have to be trimmed in God. And with... Yeah, we have to be trimmed in God, and you can also, that goes back to, like, denying yourself. So you have to deny yourself. You have to let yourself go so that God can truly trim you, let, you know, get rid of all that ugly you, the old you, so that you can truly be the potter, the vessel that he has called you to be. So after all of that, here comes the trial. So we feel like when we first come into church, it's just like, oh, God, use me, have your way. We're more susceptible to like, oh, God, mold me, God, shape me, God, do what it is that you want to do with me. And then a lot of times, I didn't know coming into church, it was going to be trial. I just thought like, oh, well, we're going to be living for God. God is good. You know, I ain't got to go through nothing or anything like that. I didn't even think I had to change because I thought I was living I thought I was living good because I wasn't doing nothing. I, I thought I wasn't doing nothing, you know. So um, I come, we come into the church and stuff like that. You know, we get before God. We're crying out. We're praying. We're getting the water. We're getting the Holy Ghost. God is doing all this, this stages. Like he's taking the, um, we're going through the prayer process. He's, you know, all of it. He's trimming us and stuff like that. But then here comes the trial, and that's the fire or whatever. And once we get to the fire sometimes, just like, oh, God, I don't want to do this no more. It's just too much or whatever. So it's just like even so within the trial and the fire, we must stand and continue to go um, to stand before I had a scripture. Okay, I don't. I didn't write the scripture down, but it did say not word verbatim, but um, it's like concerning the fiery trial. So we in life, it we go through trials. It's gonna be trials that come our way, and it's gonna be sometimes too hard for us to bear. Um, and a little bit of my testimony, um, you know, I thought I was just really just living for God. You know, what I mean, at one point it was just like God, I truly want to live for you. Like I surrender. I was. I felt like I was doing everything. And it's just something that you just don't think that you will be able to go through. Like, you're not, you know, like, God, not me, you know. So even so, like, a few years ago, I went through, like, this, this big issue that I felt was big to where I just felt like I just wasn't good enough. And it took me a long time to get out of that place. Like, I had gotten to a place of depression. It was just like, God, you can't use me no more. Like, I, I done messed up. I done fell so far away from you that I just wasn't good enough. Like, I, I felt like I was coming to church. But it's just like, I, it wasn't, nothing was happening. You know what I mean? And I, I fell out of the potter's hand, um, as I say. But I was still in his hand because he didn't give up on me, even though I gave up on myself. So um, I can, you can compare that to like the prodigal son in a sense. But, you know, he had fell so far. He had left. He had got his inheritance. And he was like, oh, I'm about to dip out. I'm about to go do my own thing or whatever. Um, and then even so, you can go to Luke 15 and 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. 
and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father's have bread enough in to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they begin to marry. Amen. So with that, it shows that even how far away that you go from God, that God is still, like, when you come back, he's, like, he's happy. Like, he gave this, his son the fatter, um, he gave him a robe, the fattest calf and all that, or whatever. So it's just like, no matter what you go through, and sometimes we got to come to ourselves. I had to come to myself because I don't fell away from God. It's just like, God, I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? I, I just can't do it. I'm, I felt like I didn't even feel God at that point. But I had to come to myself. Like, you got to push. You got to keep going. Like, God, I didn't make me. God made me. I didn't choose this life. God chose it for me. So sometimes we got to come to ourselves and know that we're still worthy to be in God's presence. We're still worthy enough to be in God's hand. And God still is able to mold us. So we have to stay in the part of hand. And um, another um, scripture I have is Exodus 4, 10 through 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither, hit, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made, have made man's mouth? Or who hath maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have, I, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Amen. So even when you don't feel equipped enough to do something, remember that you were shaped and molded by God, that you are able to do it. Like, just allow God to be the God that he is, um, that he can use you in the way that he desires that you do. Never question God because he's the potter and we're the clay. So never try to be the hard the, the hard one to mold. So don't be the, I think that's the porcelain clay. Don't be the porcelain clay, but allow God to mold you. Be more willing and, you know, to just be the woman of God that God has called you to be. And sometimes it is a process. It's a lot of things that come with it. And it's just like, God, I didn't sign up for all of this. But there's, we don't know. God said he called us from the, the, the before the foundations of the world. So God already knew what we would do. He knew what we would be. But because we don't know, we have to trust the process. We got to live through the process. And I'm the type of person to where it's just like, I don't like the unknown. <laughs> so it's just like sometimes just like if I don't know, I don't want to do it. Like so it's just like but sometimes in that state, sometimes you can you can die because of you're not remaining alive, you're not trusting the process, you're not allowing God to mold you, you're not allowing yourself to stay in a part of hand that God can make you to be. It's and it's really a faith walk, honestly. And the Bible says we must walk by faith and not by sight. So if that's saying being made, um, like you have a child, we don't we don't know what we make and when we make a child. You know what I mean? So sometimes that child come out with six fingers, five fingers, nine fingers, however it may be, God forbid. But <laughs> it's just like trust God to know that he's the potter and that he's going to make you the woman of God that he has called you to be beyond any shortcoming, beyond any failure. Um, and a thing, um, a thing that um, I would listen to a song or whatever, and he was saying like, 
God, I, he was making like this potter thing. It was a song. I forgot what it was called. But he said that in the mix of God being the potter, he had messed up in life. And he was like, God, well, what do I do with the clay? Do I throw it away? And he was like, no, you, you put it back on the wheel. Because sometimes, even though that we mess up, we got to go back to God. We got to go back to that place in prayer. We got to go back to that place in fasting. We got to go back to that place where God can trim us. Because sometimes we get so full of ourselves, our hearts get hardened. So that's when the water got to come back in. And you seek God, you get more of the Holy Ghost and be, just be able to be molded, be able to be shaped, and be more willing. So there's no point where you're ever unable to be used by God. Even if you don't fail, even if you don't mess up, and it's just like, some, like I said, sometimes we feel like we don't fail so far away like God can't use us. But sis, you're still able to be molded as long as you stay in the potter's hand. So in my closing, I say that we must remain alive. We must live while going through the process of series of action that will make you the vessel that God has called you to be. So beyond anything that you go through, I just say that just stay in the potter's hand. Stay, before, stay in prayer. Um, stay in fasting and allow God to be the God that he's, he is. Because we're not... We, we don't know what it is that God has for us. But in order to be the woman of God that you are called to be, we must stay in God's hand. So I just encourage everyone to stay in a part of his hand that he can continue to mold you and shape you and be the woman of God that he has called you to be. Amen. Come on, let us stand and give God a hand praise for this powerful message. Amen. Sister... Patrice, uh, give it to the women. Amen. Says a powerful word. Something that she said that was very powerful when it deal with those uh, clay. You have a type of clay that can't take heat, but then you got two of them that can take heat. But one of the ones that can take the most heat is the one that can't be molded. So you got people that can go through fire, but still can't be molded. But then the one that's called a stone is the one that we can be. And, and God calls us lively stones. My God. It's powerful. Know who you are in God. And allow God to mold you and make you. Come on, let us put our hands together and give God a praise again. <laughs> amen. I'm going to introduce the next uh, speaker, minister, amen, of the, amen, for, for everybody else and everybody, amen. We certainly appreciate this young man. Uh, he's the the National YAM President, at Church of God, the Bible Way. I've been watching him for about eight years now, and I've never seen him change. He's been the same consistent young man, and, you know, a lot of people look up to him. And I talk to some of the young men when they have certain things going on. They say, well, Minister Lewis reached out to me. Minister Lewis said he's going to pray with me. Minister Lewis is going to help me. So I want to let you know that you helped me. You are help to me, and you, 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 you're help to the whole body. Yes. A lot of people look up to you, and I appreciate you. And no other do, no further things to say, but I do, amen, appreciate this young man, and I know that he's going to bring forth a powerful word for the house tonight. Uh, with no, other, no further ado, we would like to introduce and some present to others, no other than Minister Lewis Potts, amen. And right before we come, we'll have a quick selection by Sister Journey Baker, amen. Hallelujah. How many ready for the word? Hallelujah. You Oh, 
worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You
Let's praise him with the lifting of our hands tonight. Open your mouth and let's talk to Jesus. Let's talk to Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. We don't give it any second thought. You are worthy to be praised. Going in, you're worthy. Coming out, you're worthy. Through the good, you're worthy. Through the bad, you are worthy. Give him a hallelujah praise, everybody. He is worthy to be praised. We exalt the almighty God. He comes second to none. The one that was and is and is to come. We adore him. We worship him. And it is a privilege to even be called a child of God. to be picked out of the world to serve him and to represent him to a part to be a part of this chosen this royal priesthood lord you're worthy just for a few minutes i want you to open your mouth and in this moment i really want you to to get in here I want you to put everything on pause. And I want you to come into this space and just just really honor him with your words. By glorifying him and worshiping Jesus. From your innermost to the utmost. I want you to draw as close as you can to Jesus because there is something in this building for you tonight. We've been praying for it. We've been fasting for it. We've been afflicting ourselves for it. So, Lord, allow us to remind you that we still believe that you answer prayer and that we still believe that you move among your people today. And we want to let you know that tonight we are here to meet your need and to please you with everything that we're giving you right now. We want to let you know that we understand there are a lot of people in this world that have allowed a lot of things to come before you. There are a lot of people in this world that have allowed a lot of things to get between their relationship with you. But tonight in this space, as we stand here on these holy grounds, we will not allow anything, an attitude, a thought, an eyesight to block us from getting to you tonight. Saints of God, lift up your voice in this sanctuary. And let us just exalt Jesus as we move in this service. Just exalt Jesus with everything within you, with everything within you, with everything within you. Because I believe that as we lift him, as we lift him, he will respond to every cry. That as we lift him, he will touch you right where you are. As we lift him, he'll revive your animals. He'll wake up at his dead. He'll stir up the gifts. He'll have his way in the midst of us tonight. But his people, 
must first give him what it is that he wants and what it is that he desires. His glory, he was showing nobody. Your attention, he was showing no one. Your affection, why don't you give him everything? Your everything, your everything, your everything. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus in the building. You're deserving of all of this. We just prepared the way for you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, descend upon us tonight. Grab your neighbor's hand and let's pray. Father, your name, Jesus Christ, we thank you. We honor you and we lift you up. Lord, we submit ourselves before you tonight. I decrease that you will increase. I minimize myself that you may maximize in me. Lord, now that we have reached this part of the service, we're ready to be spoken to. We are ready to receive whatever it is that you have for us. Lord, manifest yourself in this service. Lord, visit us, your people, in this service. We give up our will for your will. You have our attention. Hold out our eyes upon you tonight. Let tonight be a start of something new. Let tonight be a refreshing from someone, a breakthrough for someone. Lord, may your word be sharp and powerful, quick, cut and divide, minister, reach us. Oh, let your word be as a seed, wash us and water us. Lord, we give you all of the honor. We give you all of the praise. And we give you all of the glory. It is in your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. We honor Jesus tonight. It is in him that I live, I move, and I have my being. Honor and respect to the General Overseer of the Church of God, the Bible Way, Apostle Coward. <laughs> to our presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod. To the Board of Bishops. To our bishop, Bishop Kevin Williams. To our district elder, who is also my pastor. I do honor him, District Elder Nixon Philiston. To the shepherd, the angel, the leader of this house, Elder Porter, I do honor you, sir. To all of the ministers, to Pastor Johnson, who is also the district young president, Pastor Frankie Williams, to all the ministers, to the local young president, Minister Michael Singleton, and to every one of you that have made it to the house of God one more time. We are glad to be here tonight. We are expecting the Lord to do what it is that he wants to do. I am not here to entertain you. I don't care if you run around the church. I don't care if you cry, scream, or holler. I'm not here to move your emotions tonight. We are here to hear from the Lord. And I know y'all don't come looking for Lewis because I haven't come looking for y'all. But we want God to be in the midst of us. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? So we thank the Lord. Join me in the scripture tonight one passage of scripture and we want to read this Mark chapter 5 verse 1 through 15 Mark chapter 5 verse 1 through 15 and it says and they came over unto the other side of the sea 
into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains because that he had been often bound with, chain, with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with Je thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And for which Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Our topic tonight, very simple, it is finished. So in this passage of scripture, very familiar, we have a man don't know his name, but we know a little bit about him. We know that this individual lived in the mountains. He lived in the tombs. He liked to cut himself. He was bound. He will try to, people tried to hold him bound. People tried to have chains on him, but he was too strong for those chains. So we have an individual who isn't chained physically, but mentally. He's bound to this certain place. He could have went into the city. He could have went into those and among those that had life and amongst his family and among his friends. But the tomb is where he made his home. And then not only that, but in another passage of scripture, there's another individual, another man that we all know about. And this man is the man that you are not served today by the name of Jesus. He walked the earth. He performed many miracles. He raised the dead. He healed many people. But at the end of his life, he ended in a place called a tomb. So can you imagine, between all of the miracles that he performed and the time he ended up in the tomb, when he was being crucified, hanging there, being beat, just imagine what was being said. Oh, isn't this the man that also raised Lazarus, but he's on his way to the same place Lazarus was? Isn't this the same man that delivered the man who were in the mountains into the tombs, and he's now on his way to the same place he was? Isn't this the same individual who prayed for Jairus' daughter, who was lying at the point of death, but now this man, who's supposed to be the almighty God, is on his way to the same place he delivered somebody else from. And not only that, but Peter's mother-in-law was sick with fever on her way to death, and now Jesus is on his way to death. Can you imagine all of the thoughts that were going through the people's
was mine. Oh, this man that was supposed to be powerful, this man that walked on water, this man that performed all of these miracles, this anointed one, he made fish and five loaves of bread and fed so many different people. Now you're going to tell me that he is so weak and he is godless to the point he can't make a way for himself? This man ended up behind the tomb. But not only that, there's another man, Lazarus. He died, ended up in the same place. My God. So as I begin to go on, and as I begin to pray about him, the Lord began to speak to me. Yes, even he ended up behind a tomb. But when it was time for him to roll that tomb away, and it was time for him to come out, he came out. And when he got to Lazarus, even though Lazarus was there for an extended period of time, when it was time for Lazarus to come forth, he came forth. And with this man who was cutting himself in the mountains, in the tombs, when it was time for him to come forth, he came forth. So what the Lord is saying today, there are so many of us who have made a graveyard our home. There are so many of us who have made a tomb our permanent dwelling place. So many of us who are there hiding in the dark, hiding behind the tomb walls, hiding there amongst the dead, amongst those that ain't got no anointing, amongst those that ain't moving, amongst those that are not alive, amongst those that are pointless, amongst those that are purposeless, and we have made that place our home, our permanent home. But God is saying that when he calls you out, it's time for you to come out. When the tomb is rolled away, it's time for you to come forth. When God calls your name, it's not for you to remain but it's for you to rise. And as Jesus, the prodigal son, he went his own way, but he thought up in his mind everything he had in his father's house, and he said, I will arise and go back. And God is saying that today. Your tomb days are over. Your graveyard days are over. Your crying days are over. Your weeping days are over. You giving up on yourself. You going in the tower. You cutting yourself. God, I thought this and God, I thought that. You told me this and you told me that. God know how it feels. Because he walked this walk. I performed the miracle, yet I died. I performed healings, yet I died. I did many miracles, yet a tomb was my temporary place. And if I got up from a tomb, then you too can rise from a tomb. It's not your home. It's just your process. It's not where you leave. It's where you're on your way to. And one thing about it, when the Lord rose, there were several different things that he did. He appeared unto Thomas. Yes, it is me. And not only that, but he had a big old fish, fish fry on the banks of the river repeating them. All of these miracles that was performed because he knew his tomb days was over. And tonight, there are so many places in God where God wants to take you. There are so many things in him that he want to do in you. But if you will let go of your grave, let go of your tomb, then power is in your hand. Prophecy is in your womb. Greatness is in your belly. But you got to rise. you got to come forth. And tonight, I've come to call you out. Tonight, I've come to roll it for you. Tonight, you shall walk away. You shall walk out. You shall come forth. Somebody open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. I, God understood. I can't stay here forever. I got people I got to save. I have to get up. But the thing about it, while he was in the tomb, he wasn't really in the tomb. To the natural eye, they thought he was there. But he was somewhere else completing another assignment. Oh, my God. He was in heaven, ministering here and ministering there, telling the people about salvation and doing all those godly things that only a God can do. Oh, yes. He was. And I was thinking, well, Lord, uh, well, what about us? Sometimes we feel like we have hit rock bottom. And in the darkness, uh, in the shadows is where we belong. Uh, and he said, the people of God think uh, that the tomb is such a bad place. Uh, but it's not really a bad place. Uh, it only becomes bad uh, when you stay there beyond your expiration date. Uh, so just me, for an example. Uh, they put me in the tomb, uh, and they thought I was there. Uh, but I snuck out because uh, I had to go do something else. Uh, and God is saying, 
in you. Yes, you. You may think you're there, but it's ministry brewing on the inside. You may think it's wasteless, oh, but there's greatness brewing on the inside. You may think, but God, why do I have you here? Don't ask me why I got you there. I got you there so I can work on you. I got you there so I can build you. I got you there so I can raise you. I can't do it amongst the people. I got to bring them out. I got to separate you. Like he did the blind man. He called him out of the town. He performed the miracle on the outside. God got to do some separating. He got to do some pulling out to push you forward. Oh, good God Almighty. There's some work that need to be done. And I need you all to myself. So I'm going to pull you into my spiritual tomb. Uh, you know it as a secret closet. I'm going to pull you in. I got to deal with you. Let me show you you. Let me show you what's on the inside of you. Let me speak to you. Let me pull you to the side where it's just you and I. Because when you are there amongst the people, you're distracted with all your gadgets. When you are there amongst the people, you're distracted with all your social life and your outfits and your hair and your friendships and your relationships. To the point I'm standing back here saying, I want some time with you as well. Well, I know how to get you. I'll kill you. I'll bring you to a death place. I'll bring you to a low place. You don't want me while you're living? Well, you don't want me when you're dead. So I'll bring you here. Let me talk to you while you can't even move. I'm going to wrap you up like Lazarus is wrapped up. Well, all you can do is just lay down and listen to what it is I got to say to you. I'm dealing with you. I'm making you. I'm molding you. Stay there and don't get up till I tell you to move. Stand there to him. And when I tell you to come up, that's when I want you to come up. Don't you try to move the wall yourself. Don't try to roll it away yourself. Why you there? I'm making, I'm making, I'm making, I'm making, I'm making. There are some miracles you got to perform. You can't do it amongst the people. I got to separate you. There are some doors I need you to open. You can't do it amongst the people. I got to separate you. There's greatness in you. And it's only going to come out when I hide you away. When I bury you. All glory to God. Hallelujah. But tonight in this building, many of us have made the tomb our permanent home. But God is saying tonight, I'm rolling the stone away. I'm rolling the rolling the stone away. And when I say Patrice, you better walk out. When I call Valerie, you better walk out. When I say Dante, you better walk out. I don't care about your emotions. I don't care if you're feeling low. I don't care if you think you're unqualified. I don't care if you don't think you got the skills. When I say your name, you come forth. I'll make you while you're on your way. I'll help you while you're on your way. I'll guide your steps. I'll raise you high. I'll bring you out. I'll make you that woman. I'll make you that man. But listen at my voice. And listen for your name. Oh God Almighty. I'm reminded of when I graduated. Both high school and college. I was so excited. Got my cap and my gown. Got my nice little outfit. And when it came down from my road to go right up to the stands. I was like, here we go. Here we go. Go ahead and say my name. So the first person went. Then the next person went. Then I passed the announcer my car. And then he called my name. I walked across that stage with so much pride. So much happiness. Because everything I had been through. All four years of college. Was for that moment. And everything I've been through. All 12 years of high school. Was for that moment. There are those that give up in the ninth grade. There are those that gave up in the 10th grade. There are those that didn't even make it in high school. But I'm one of the ones that were able to cross the stage. And tonight, God is saying there are many who left. There are many who couldn't take it. They couldn't wait for me to roll the stone. So they rolled the stone themselves. They couldn't wait for me to open the grave. So they opened the grave themselves. They came out prematurely. They didn't want me to make them. They didn't want me to mold them. They couldn't take my dirt. They couldn't take the darkness. But are you here today? 
You must hold on. You must trust him. You must know that what's in you is worth every tear you cry. What's in you is worth every time you want to give up. What's in you is worth every weight you got to bear. What's in you is worth your darkness. Oh, my God. Oh, hallelujah. What's in you is worth more than gold. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The pressure has been applied. The squeezing has been done. The fire has been crunk up. But like the three Hebrew boys, they were there. But one of them wasn't a Hebrew boy. One of them was the Almighty One. So what I'm saying, you're not in a tomb alone. But there's a God there with you. You're not in the fire alone. There's a God there with you. Oh, my God. Oh, tonight, rolling is about to happen. Tonight, just as mentioned in the Bible, all oh, the trucks are sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I've come here tonight to blow the trumpet. I come here tonight to sound the alarm. Your grave days are over. Your tomb days are over. Don't you hear the alarm? Don't you hear the trumpet blowing? You must come out lest you expire. It's time for you to walk out as the Lord's been dealing with us from the grave to the mountaintop is where he's calling his people tonight. Oh, from the grave into the glory is where he wants you tonight. Oh, my God. On the mountain of transfiguration. Oh, there were individuals there. Oh, my God. Who saw Jesus in a way that other people didn't see him. Oh, God, I thank you. You must get there. The climbing has begun. The grave is open. You must come forth. You must come forth. You must come forth. Walk out of fear. Walk out of self-doubt. Walk out of your past. Walk out of your guilt. Walk out of the gray clothes that holds you, that chokes you, that binds you. Walk out and walk in into prophecy. Walk out and walk in into prayer. Divers kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Walk into that which God has called you into. He's calling you out and calling you in. There's a change of a place is going on. There's a rearranging of the space is going on. Moving from one location to the next. Oh God. Shifting of spaces. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be afraid. Preach, preach, preach. Don't be afraid. Sing, sing, sing. Don't be afraid. Evangelize. Evangelizer, don't be afraid. Walk out, my Peters. Walk out, my Peters. There's a sea you must walk on. There's a water you must walk on. Somebody shout, yeah! Glory to God. Glory to God. See, Peter understood it. That boat was his tomb. That boat was his grave. He saw something he'd never seen afar off. Lord, is it you? It gotta be you. Cause can't nobody else walk on water. Well, Jesus responded with one word. Come.
If you're bold enough, just come. If you're bold enough, just step out. You too can walk into the impossible. You too can tread into places where you think you cannot. Oh, glory to God. Peter let his grave go. Took one foot, put it in front of the other, and begin to walk out on the wall. Oh, my God. Saints tonight. Tonight's the night. They're being rolled. Graves are being opened. You feel it on the inside. You know what God has for you. You know what he's been dealing with you about. You fight and you fight. You cry and you cry. You labor and you labor. Frustration, frustration. Anger being upset. All of these things. You must not know what's going on. Oh, glory to God. All of my mothers in here. You understand the signs of labor. You know when things begin to cramp in. Some start turning, water start breaking, water start flowing, pain here, pain there, sometimes it's uncontrollable, sometimes make you upset, sometimes make you want to cry, but there's a baby coming out, something's being birthed, oh yes it is, and the grave is cracking, the stone is rolling, what's going on, I'm about to come out, what's happening in my life, I'm contracting, what's going on, I'm birthing, I'm arising, I'm arriving, I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out, that's what's going on, I'm in bed, water flowing, blood here, blood there, I'm coming out, I'm being in bed, somebody shout it, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Misunderstandings. Oh, the tomb is rolling. The tomb is rolling. No more cutting yourself. No more asking why. No more getting upset. Lord, what's going on? Lord, I don't understand. Where are you taking me? What you doing to me? What's going on? Baby, listen. I'm bringing you out of the shadows. I'm bringing you out of the dark. Black symbolizes fear, heaviness, weights. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I was in prayer. And the Lord gave me this thing to have a blackout service. And I said, Lord, what is this? I mentioned it to Minister Mike. I said, let's do blackout. And the Lord began to deal with me. Blackout. 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 Black out, exiting the black, coming out of the dark, coming out of fear, coming out of heaviness, coming out of the weight. That's what's happening. There's a great exodus going on tonight. An exodus, a mass deliverance for the people of God. Oh God, in the book of Exodus, to the rivers, oh, the last thing that happened was the death of the firstborn. After that happened, Pharaoh said, Moses, get you and your people out of here. I don't have nothing to do with y'all. Get out. When death comes, it's associated with black. And God is saying, dying, you dying in your tomb. You dying in your grave. It's not all over. But there's an exodus happening, a coming out taking place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Many have been in tombs of the portal. Many have been in graves. They've made it their homes. This is where I gotta be. The tombstone is there. My name is there. Lewis, the one that hurt. That's what's on my tombstone. Lewis, the one that suffered. That's what they wrote on my tombstone. Lewis, the one that was bound by his past failures. That's what was on my tombstone. They called it quits. Thought it was over. And even I thought it was over. But I was there just for an appointed time. There just to be made. There just to be molded. 
<laughs> oh, God, I thank you. But one day, God split that tomb, that headstone in half, opened up that grave, and I heard my name, Lewis, 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 Lewis. God, is that you? Is that really you giving me a second chance? Are you calling me? I'm surely, you can't be calling me. Put that light away. I've gotten used to the dark. It's too bright. I've been here for so long. I'm ashamed, God. I'm fearful, Lord. I feel like, I feel like Adam. I've sinned. Surely, you can't use me. Surely, you can't do nothing to me. Oh, but I thank God for looking beyond my faults and still calling my name. Oh, Jesus, you still remember me? You still consider me? You still think about me? Yes, sir. Lewis, get out of there. And I want you to come out of the grave and go uh, into Savannah. Lord, me to do what? Go and witness. Go and be a light. Oh, God, I thank you. But see, fear, oh, of the dark, tried to keep me in the grave. Lord, certainly I can't do it. Lord, certainly you want somebody else. No, I want you and all your imperfections. You and all your impurities. You and all your blemishes and your stains. You do it. You do it. I don't want nobody that's all clean, pearly white. Pretty poison and poison. I need you that don't cry a little bit. I want you that got some bruises, some, some battle wounds, some scars. I want you that I know that been through something. Ah, you go do it. I said, Lord, no, certainly. You gotta be calling somebody else. Know you. Hallelujah. And to even make it even clearer at the point, the apostle in one service pointed me out and said, when you gonna get yourself together? When you gonna go and do the will of the Lord? If you don't do it, your life gonna be off for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus. Okay, so now by this time, I'm halfway out, but then I got sucked back in. Mm, my God, anybody know that feeling? <laughs> I was on my way, but then fear gripped me. It gripped me. Oh no, I can't do it. And what I was so afraid of was failing God. I didn't want to do it because the first time I failed him. But now this time I was like, Lord, I don't want to do that again. So I pulled myself back in the grave. Mm. God, I thank you. Then kept going. Then kept going. Then we had another conversation. Apostle said, son, God has given you a second chance at his will. I said, Lord, you calling me again. You must really be in love with me. You must be infatuated with me. Oh, you are head over heels for me. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, hallelujah. So I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. So I made a step. I, I, I applied to Savannah State. I said, okay, Lord, you want me there? I'm going to come out of my grave and I'm going to do it. So I applied. I was so excited because I said yes to his will and it's time to get the job done. Then received a letter in the mail and said, sorry, Mr. Potts, but you are not accepted. I said, huh? Got sucked back in the grave. I said, see, Lord, I told you. I'm not the one that can do this. They just told me that it's not for me. The school said it, that I didn't get in. But the Lord was just still calling, Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. So I gave it some more time, made some changes, made some adjustments, did some more academic studies and different things. So then I decided to give it another shot. So I gave it another shot. Walked out my grave, applied again. I was like, Lord, okay, I'm ready, let's do it. Let's do it the first time, it didn't work. You called my name the first time, I obeyed and I got disappointed, but you know I'm gonna put the past behind me. Applied again, then got accepted. And I rejoiced, I was happy. But then the thought came again, you're going to fail, God. I got sucked back in the grave. Mm. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
Oh, no, you can't do it. I said, there's no way. Lord, you know my past better than anybody. You know how messed up I was? A church boy trying to get mixed in with the world. And you know how it hurt me? How embarrassed I felt? All of these things. So certainly, no, I can't. I can't. Then the man of God preached a message one Sunday. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go and get prayer. I was the only one up there asking to pray for me. I said, okay, I'll give it another shot. Stepped out my grave again. Man of God prayed for me. He said, don't be afraid. There's much success there. You won't fail. I said, God, I thank you. Encouragement. So what Lewis did, he packed his bags, loaded his car, drove on up I-95, crossed the Florida-Georgia border. But when I crossed the border, I got emotional, y'all. Because I said, Lord, I don't want to fail you. So I went back in my grave, down the road crying. Lord, you got to help me. Because I don't know what the unknown is looking like. So got there, pulled up the campus. I said, okay, let your will be done. I came out the grave. God still called me. And saints of God, I'm glad he called me. I'm glad I let go of the grave. I'm glad I came on out when he really wanted me to come out. Because not only he called my name out of the grave, but he called a young man by the name of Pastor Tassim Tillman. Then he called another young man by the name of Pastor Randy Griffin. And then he kept on calling. He called different ones. Then I even hit a night, Minister Michael Singleton, then Pastor Frankie Williams. He went to calling young people all over the place. So, Lord, I went to thinking, God, thank you for calling me. Thank you for bringing me out. Thank you for raising me. Thank you for not coming up on me. Thank you for rolling the stone away. Thank you, God, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for letting me out of my grave clothes. Lord, I thank you because all of that was the glory God bestowed on my life. And tonight, there's glory on you, but you got to come out. There's glory on you, but you got to come out. You're useless in the grave. You're useless in the tomb. You got to rise. Somebody hop on your feet and say, I will arise. I will arise. When he call your name, step out. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh. When I call your name, I want you to come out tonight. Oh, God. Minister Ron, come out. Sister Dana, Valerie, Soraya, Dante, it's time. Kiwi, Kiwi, come out, I say. Come out. Somebody help her. Get her out of that grave. Oh, Patrice, out. Letitia, out. Joel, walk. Walk. Michael, come out. Oh, graves are opening. Graves are opening. Graves are opening. Tenaria, out. TK, out. Roll the tombs. Roll the tombs. The tombs are rolling. The tombs are rolling. The tombs are rolling. The tombs are rolling. Your exodus is upon you. Your exodus is upon you. Diego, out, out, out. Come out, out of the grave, out of the grave, out of the grave. Your name is being called. We don't fit in. 
with the world, out of the darkness, into spiritual gifts, out of the grave, into spiritual gifts, out of hiding, out of fear, we're coming out, we're coming out, we're coming out, all over the building, exit, all over the building, exit, all over the building, exit, exit, Mariah, come out, come out, I call you, I call you, I call you, I call you, Vante, Vante, come out, oh out, you gotta walk, you gotta walk, you gotta walk, you gotta walk, you hide in your fear, you hide in your darkness, you're hiding under the ground, you're hiding behind your failures, but the night, graves are opening, graves are opening, surrender, get out, get out, get out, get out, no more fear and doubt, no more thinking you can't do it, thinking you can't make it, thinking you ain't good enough, no more thinking you can't preach, thinking you can't be sent, no more, let it go, let it go, let it go, tombs are rolling, walk in prophecy, walk in prophecy, walk in prophecy, walk out and walk in it, walk out and walk in it, walk out and walk in it, woman, walk into intercession, walk into intercession, walk into intercession, walk, 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 out of being bound, out of being low, out of being empty, walk tonight, walk tonight, walk tonight, walk tonight, walk tonight. Because you're more than able. 
you're more than able. And you can. You can. This well. Right up here. This your position. This your position. Your position. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. You can do it. You can. We're changing positions. Relocation from the front, from the back to the front. Come from the back to the front. Repositioning. We're repositioning. We're repositioning. We're repositioning. We're repositioning. 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 New position. A new position. From the back to the front. From the back to the front, from the back, be bold, be bold. Sing for him. You are good enough. Reposition. A reposition, a reposition, a reposition, a reposition. When it don't feel good. Oh God, oh God, change position, change position. Up here, up here, up here. Come out the corner. Come to the front. Come out of the corner. Come to the front. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. He coming out, y'all. He's exiting. He's exiting. Walk in your prophetic. Walk in the gift. Walk in the gift. Walk in the gift. Walk. In the gift. Walking, walking, walking. Position, change your position, change your position, change your position, change it up, 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 up to seek, to speak, to see, to speak, and see. Oh, oh. have been in the wrong place. Many of you have been in the wrong place. You've gotten comfortable. You've rooted yourself there. You've made that place your home. You've made your bed there. You've called it and said, this is where I'm going to live. You've allowed your failures. You've allowed your inconsistencies. You've allowed everything that was going wrong to stop you 
from coming out and making heaven your new home. But after tonight, your new home will be built in God. Find a refuge, a resting place in Him. It's a new position. There's so much word in this vessel. So much scripture. So much knowledge. So much wisdom. Oh, tonight, God, bring it out. Bring it forth. Bring it out and bring it forth. Give a bonus to speak. Bonus to speak. To counsel. Oh, God, I'm a host. Anda, you're a host. Oh, you're a host. Shanda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. God is igniting fires, fires that you had when you came. Fires that you had when you came. Fires, fires, fires that was there. The passion that was there. Awaken, be awakened, be awakened, be awakened, be awakened, be awake. New position, new position, new position, new position, my God, my God. It 
is done. Touch these eyes. positions. New position. He's giving you a new position. You've never been here before. It's new for you. New. 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 It's finished. It's finished. <laughs> 